At University of Virginia Health System, we're for bringing advanced care closer to home. So we're bringing health knowledge directly to you with UVA Health System Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. New advances in heart imaging can help doctors better identify heart disease. My guest is Dr. Jamie Bork. He's a cardiologist at UVA Health System. Welcome to the show, Dr. Bork. Tell us what are some of the advanced imaging options available at UVA to identify heart disease. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, We have several advanced imaging options um, uh, available now, including cardiac magnetic resonance imaging or cardiac MRI, which gives very detailed images of the structure and function of the heart and has some additional features such as scar imaging that, that is particularly useful. Uh, cardiac computed tomography, which allows us to look at the coronary arteries in a non-invasive fashion, so without actually having to put a catheter um, in the body. Uh, But the one that I'm particularly excited about uh, that we've recently started using is an advanced form of stressed test imaging called cardiac positron emission tomography, or cardiac PET for short. And what exactly is that? How does it differ from the standard imaging? So cardiac PET stress testing allows us to more accurately diagnose chest pain uh, that we think is due to coronary artery disease uh, more quickly than our standard stress imaging and also with less radiation. Uh, it's, uh, and, and those are all advantages, but its most exciting feature is its ability to image the microvasculature, that is, the small blood vessels that supply the heart. So using this technique, we can identify the cause of chest pain in patients with convincing symptoms, but who have a negative workup, including a cardiac catheterization. These patients have previously been told there is nothing wrong with their heart, but we now know that sometimes that is not the case. They may have coronary microvascular dysfunction, and this test allows us to look for that. So it gives you a better view of those microvessels that we didn't have before. Yes. There was, previously, there was no way to actually assess those vessels um, and, and this is now an, an option that is available to us. So who benefits most from these new imaging techniques? So, uh, again, patients who have a negative cardiac workup previously but may have continued symptoms or who had a stress test that was previously equivocal, as in they weren't quite sure whether it was positive or negative, which can sometimes happen with our stress testing. Those sorts of patients are are particularly benefit from cardiac PET imaging. Uh, However, because of its improved diagnostic accuracy in patients who have multi-vessel disease, it's also very useful in patients who have diabetes and kidney disease, as well as patients who may carry a little more weight. So in the cardiac PET stress test, are there limiting factors as in a regular stress test where maybe, you know, the quadriceps start to burn too early or the person can't keep up with the treadmill? Are there those limiting factors or have those been removed? So it's a good question. Um, Unfortunately, the current tracers available don't allow us to use exercise for stress. The By the time the patient got on the table after exercising, the tracer would already be gone, which is good because it means low radiation for the patient, but it's unfortunate we can't uh, use exercise. There are some imaging tracers in in the research pipeline that will allow exercise stress, but for the moment what we do is we give a, a medication that dilates the blood vessels, and that simulates stress on the heart. It's very safe, um, but also allows us to to, uh, stress the heart without actually having them walk on a treadmill. So, Dr. Bork, what would you recommend for heart imaging exams that patients should undergo routinely, and how often? So, it it turns out that most of our uh, cardiac imaging are tests that really should only be done when a patient is symptomatic, so they may have chest pain or shortness of breath. Uh, There are some very specific instances uh, where uh, non-invasive imaging may be helpful, such as someone with a very significant family history and multiple cardiac risk factors, or someone who's particularly high risk and plans to undergo non-cardiac surgery. 
Uh, but for most patients, we actually would wait to do any imaging until they had symptoms. And uh, th this has really been uh, an advance in our field. Cardiac imaging is something that has been overused um, to the significant expense of, uh, of patients and, and insurance companies, and then also significant uh, expenditures of patient time and effort. So uh, for the most part, uh, patients should really be symptomatic before undergoing these tests. Is this different rules for men versus women? Uh, so in the in the past, we might have thought that men uh, they men do have a higher risk of coronary disease. However, that uh, difference has been shrinking, uh, partly due to um, uh, the sort of rise of obesity, uh, increased tobacco use uh, in women. So uh, while that might have been the case in the past, it's less true now. What If someone is experiencing chest pain, shortness of breath, how do you determine, do you go right into tests or how do you determine whether this is anxiety? Because sometimes those symptoms can be, we're a very stressed out society these days, Dr. Bork, and sometimes those symptoms can be associated with a number of different other conditions. Absolutely. So there's no question that both chest pain and shortness of breath can be due to non-cardiac reasons or even to cardiac reasons other than decreased blood flow to the heart. Um, the best way that we have to, uh, the initial screen that we do is with a careful history and physical. And uh, oftentimes in talking with patients and finding out when they have their symptoms and, and what their, the quality of their symptoms, we're able to make a determination well, you know, that chest pain that you get when you're just sitting still on the couch and it's worse after a, a fatty meal, that's probably not coronary disease. Whereas chest pain or shortness of breath that comes on, you know, three minutes, you know, uh, or every time you go up a flight of stairs or every time you walk up a hill, causing you to sweat and, and pant and, and have to stop at the top and, and resting makes it better, that's very concerning symptomatology. What so about that's other? The, the... No, that's okay. What about other imaging tests that have been used previously, like carotid ultrasounds, or you know, looking at cholesterol levels, plaques in arteries? Are we still using these, even CRP? So those are all good methods for risk stratification for patients. So again, uh, those sorts of testing are probably better as you were saying before, for the asymptomatic patient, where we may want to look at someone who has a family history or who has multiple cardiovascular risk factors and do plaque imaging, or actually our, the most effective method we have right now is uh, calcium scoring, which is an, a non-invasive uh, uh, cardiovascular imaging test, relatively inexpensive. We do offer that at UVA. Uh, but usually looking at blood pressure, blood glucose, uh, cholesterol, all of the standard cardiac risk factors gives us a pretty good idea of who to test. CRP can be used in patients where you sort of have a borderline, you know, should we treat this patient or not after looking at their risk factors. So CRP, calcium scoring, which we do offer, um, carotid intimal, intimal medial thickness um, measurement, but calcium scoring is probably a better, a better method. Why should patients choose UVA for their heart care? So I'm biased, but I do believe that UVA is an excellent choice for anyone who's looking for compassionate care and for a comprehensive evaluation of their heart by highly trained physicians uh, using the latest tools that are available anywhere. Um, I believe that our up-to-date knowledge and our cutting-edge diagnostic testing and the treatments that we have available make us a clear choice for cardiac care. Dr. Burke, give us your best advice in the last minute for preventing heart disease, and maybe then we don't have to come see you. Absolutely. So I, I think the, the best thing that folks can do to prevent heart disease are to watch their risk factors. So get an annual physical, 
monitor the blood pressure, monitor cholesterol, um, watch your diet. A Mediterranean diet we know now is probably the, the best way to go. Um, keep, uh, keep one's weight down, keep from um, becoming overweight, and, and probably most importantly, and I know you'll like to hear this as an exercise physiologist, we need to, to get out and exercise more. And I think if Thank patients so do much. all of those things, if they do all of those things, then maybe they can help to prevent heart disease in this Heart Health Month. You're listening to UVA Health System Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.